Very good evening to you and a very warm welcome. It's me, Scotty McClure. We are, of course, live on the big one, Facebook Live, the one everyone's watching and the one everyone is talking about. The start of another superb hour, superb hour of scintillating information, education, and entertainment, not for just one nation, but for all nations. This is Scotty McClue, broadcasting live globally here on Facebook Live. Dinky do. Everybody's watching. That's absolutely tremendous. Make sure during the program you tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 that you're watching Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live just for you. Now we've got some excellent things to talk about tonight. How it is, says Paul McCulley. Good evening, Scotty Dinky Doo. Hello, Scotty, says Martin Holden. Good evening, Scotty. Welcome, 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 I say, says Ben Lewis. Welcome, 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 I say to you. Andrew Mackay. Hi, Scotty. I love a Sunday night. I love a Sunday night as well, because we all get together for the chit-chat, big time. So there we are. Hi, Scotty boy. Stephen Butman now. Shirley Cooper's watching. Lynn Finlayson's watching. Ha-ha. Dinky Doo. Says Andy McCrory, dinky do to you, Andy McCrory. Tony Max with us, of course. Excellent stuff. Welcome, welcome. Councillor Henry Anderson, George Raffin. How marvellous is that? All the stars of the internet with us. Scotty McClue, just for you, saying dinky do. Tonight, our main subject for discussion. Do you think a marriage works best? when people uphold their traditional roles. In other words, the husband goes out and brings home the bacon or earns the money, and uh, the missus stays at home and does the kids and the food and tidies and cleans the house. Do you think that is the best arrangement for bliss in domesticity? Tell me what you think, of course, Scotty McClure, just with you. Alec Ritchie, all right, Scotty boy. Morning, Scotty. How's it going, buddy? Did you get up to much? Always up to something. Paul Smith, Eileen Cunliffe, watching. Hello, Eileen. Alan Grant and James Allen, dinky-doo. A very warm welcome to you as well. Now, tell everybody we're on, folks. Tell everybody what you're doing. Type in, type, 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 type. type. I'm watching Scotty McClure right now, live of course, on Facebook Live. Bin me up, Captain Sir George Raffin, of course. Uh, Stuart McTaggart. Hi, Scotty. Since Scotland got pumped out, uh, there's about to be a UK team. Uh, we'll see about that. John Baird's watching Alan Humphrey, Scott Alexander. Mel Booth, a fantastic man, a great businessman, is watching Dinky Doo to you and a wonderful radio manager as well. We like to know about that. We like you, Mel Booth. Wonderful. Hey, Peter McDonald's watching. Hello, my friend, says Joseph Gibbons. No, both partners should work in the 21st century, Scotty. I sadly disagree. For the first time, says Andrew Mackay. Well, you're allowed to disagree with Scotty McClue as long as you see the error of your ways. By the end of the program, we will let you go on your merry way. Not a problem. Mark Cruden's watching Dinky Doo to you, Chieftain Cruden. Calder Hughes is watching Dinky Doo. Calder, lovely to have you with us. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. Scotty McClue saying Dinky Doo to every single one of you live on Facebook Live. One of the world's top broadcast platforms. 1.8 billion people have Facebook. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. We're doing very well. A couple of weeks ago, uh, just over the 15,000 watching the little video, how tremendous is that? Now, this week I had a wonderful interview with uh, Shelley McRobbie um, of Radio Telstar International. So you'll see that on Facebook getting shared around. Uh, Scotty, I've spent 70 quid uh, on Babe Station and you weren't even on, says Rab Hill. <laughs> James Kelly, we don't even know what that is. Kieran Anderson, Alex Robertson, and John Robertson, probably no relation, but perhaps watching as well. Welcome to you guys. A woman should do the lot. That's why we marry them, says Steve Burrows. So there we are. Keith Hodgson's watching. Richard McCusker, of course, Andy Drummond, and Stephen Rodriguez. Oh, we like that. What a great amount of people, guys. That's terrific. Let's get the footfall up all the time. I know the beauty of broadcasting online 
is uh, that you can leave it and it just gathers lots and lots of moths. The Rolling Stone gathers moths during the week, which is wonderful. We like that. Not seen you in ages, Chieftain, says Mark. Dinky do, Mark. Lovely to hear from you, Chieftain. I say to you, Shelley McRobbie's watching. Shelley McRobbie, wonderful lady. Thoroughly enjoyed doing the interview with you the other night. You were so good. Slight apology to make to you. When I heard it played back, um, I was kind of rumbling on when you were asking questions. I just couldn't hear you terribly well. There was absolutely no disrespect meant in that. I know you wouldn't have taken it that way, but it was just to explain, Shelley. That was what was happening. I couldn't hear you terribly well. Um, the, the line wasn't great from that point of view, so I lost uh, one or two of the questions, but we managed very, very well, and um, I hope you're as happy with it as I am. It's a superb interview. Well done, and it's up on YouTube as well, of course. Um, time you were on Twitter, says Josh Mahu Wood. I'm on Twitter, at Scotty McClue. Go on and follow me, everyone. Tom Campbell's watching. Joe Craig, Alan Weir. Hi, Scotty. Marriage is a partnership, so both parents should take equal share of the work and the caring responsibilities. Well, of course, that's the modern way, isn't it? Uh, get the lines out, Scotty, from Carla. Uh, Alan McDonald, dinky do to you, Tam Ramage, Shelley says, Hello, haha, it's all good, it was brilliant to speak with you. And yep, over the moon, and a lovely kiss. Same to you, my darling, thank you so much for that. Mwah. It was uh, it was excellent, and it was lovely talking to you, and I hope the big boss, the big boss, was, uh, was as chuffed as you and I are. Uh, what do you think of football today, says Josh. Josh, let's not go there, there's a lot more to life than saying, what did you think of the game? What did you think of the game? Do you think he should be in the bench? All that sort of stuff. Hi, Scotty, says Tam. Hi, Tam. I've been listening to some of your old stuff on YouTube, Scotty. Great stuff. Wish you still did the phone-ins, says Neely Davy Cooper McCallum. Now, Neely Davy Cooper McCallum, what we're going to be doing is uh, looking, I'm trying, I'm in discussion all the time with television people. We're trying to see who's going to end up with McClue, who's going to have the market. Whoever has McClue has the market. So we're talking to television people at the moment, and um, of course, they are used to working to formats and formulas. So something new and interesting is always a bit of a culture shock for them. So you've got to kind of take them by the hand and lead them forward. But if you run a television company and you're watching, get in touch with Scotty McClue. Let's get your audience up because it's interesting when you see um, a couple of fail programs on the telly and you think, oh dear, oh dear, if you just listen to Scotty McClue. After James Wright, get women working in the house, especially Theresa May. <laughs> After the mess, they've made in politics. <laughs> so they are, gee, Scotty, what do we have to do to qualify for the World Cup? We just don't have the homegrown players. Yes, I mean, absolutely. I don't wish to say anything stereotypical, but it's very interesting when you're hearing England players or Scotland players interviewed and there's not an English or Scottish accent to be found. The big boss, lol, I've heard that one before, says Rab Hill. Steph McElvenny is watching Dinky Doo, I say to you. You're only saying that because Scotland are rubbish, says Josh Mahoo. No, 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 no. Scotland have maybe just been taking a wee bit of time out. They're not rubbish at all. They're wonderful. Scotland, what do you think of, uh, Scotty, what do you think of time travellers? Well, look at my good self. Here I am, fresh as a daisy, after um, being 325 million years on the earth. You know, it's not too bad, is it? Uh, Scotty, does Jerry Springer, now that would be good. Scotty does Jerry Springer, now that would be good. Absolutely. I can remember the gentleman who took over from me in the phone-in in Manchester was a gentleman called Jeremy Kyle. So there you are. So it's uh, it's it's always good um, that one of us has made it. That's what I always say. So good luck to Jeremy, uh, a fine fellow. Scotty, uh, Nicholas, no be near Govan Hill. People have chickens and goats in their back gardens. Even the police won't go in there. Oh, you're being harsh. Not at all, not at all. I think you've obviously visited a farm. So there you are. Govan Hill will be on the other side of the farm. Scotland and Mint Scotty, says Don Curry. No, 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 no. Don't start all that. I am not having a huge fecht, a big fight, 
flaring up on my program here, for goodness sake. But um, I do agree with you. It's time they gave me back my phones. I think what a lot of politicians don't realize, and ordinary people even don't realize, you know, ordinary people are obviously a bit more switched on than the politicians, but a lot of the politicians don't realize that unless we have, or until we have, a national megaphone in, hosted by Scotty McClue, virtually all their words and promises and everything like that will all fall on stony ground. Yeah? Because they're sitting there, they're going on to the public service broadcaster or the top commercial broadcasters, and the interviewers have got a script. And they're saying, could we ask you this question? Could we ask you that question? They need to get down to these people and actually say, put that script away and let's talk properly about what you're going to do. What's on your manifesto? How are you going to actually carry that out? Now, come on, tell us straight. So there you are. Um, hello, Scotty, what's your favorite film? Oh, Lisa Clark, I've got so many favorite films. I watched um, the one about uh, the airplane captain that landed in the Hudson, Sully. Loved that. Anything with Tom Hanks in it is an absolute cracker. It's wonderful. And um, Captain Phillips as well. I mean, the suspense in that. One of my favorite films of all time, though, is a film called Tunes of Glory. And it's about a Scottish regiment after the Second World War. Uh, a Scottish Highland regiment. So there you are. It was a book, Tunes of Glory. And uh, fantastic stuff. Uh, Scotty, plain bread or pan bread? What do you prefer? Oh, very interesting after James Wright. I think we're probably going to go for the... Um, the malted brown. So there you are. I miss the arguments on phone in, Scotty, and the truth that you talk most of the time, says Andrew McKay. Football players don't care. They're just there for the money, says Steve Burris. No, no, they must care. They work very, very hard. They do all their training, and it's not a terribly long career. There comes a time when uh, they have to... Uh, there comes a time when they have to chuck it, you know. Why don't you make a Scotty does Jeremy? Now, that would be great. Scotty McClue doing the same show as Jeremy, that sort of show. <laughs> Anything at all, it's interesting. Um, you know, I mean, somebody said, what does Scotty McClue do? Does he do comedy? Does he do current affairs? Does he do politics? Uh, you know, does he do science? Does he do arts? What What is Scotty McClue's specialist? And the answer is yes. Yes, he does. Um, have you seen the film The Green Mile with Tom Hanks? Fantastic. Uh, McClue. You should be in the couch with Alex on a Friday night. The one show. You could wipe the floor with Giles. I would like to wipe the floor with Giles. Giles, fantastic. Uh, so there we are. Now, how is your gardener chattering, Gordon Sterling? That's of far more interest to me, I could tell you. Uh, miss my comment then, says Stuart McTaggart. Make it again, Stuart. I do miss stuff, and I sincerely apologize. Um, I look down at the show when we're finished to see who's been on, and I think I missed them. They were in Argentina. I missed them. They were in Paraguay. You never answered my question, says Steph. Probably missed it. Come on, Stuart McTaggart, get that comment back up again. Josh says, what's your favorite song? I have so many favorite songs. Wonderful favorite songs. It's, it's just, you know, I love my Nat King Cole. So there you go. Um, Darren Jones, dinky do to you. Steph says I've not answered his question. What are you talking about, Steph? If you've just joined us, folks, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, and the world's most humble man, doing a one-hour show on Facebook Live on a Sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp, British summer time. That will soon change to Greenwich Mean Time, guys. Uh, so sort yourself out if you're on Eastern Standard Time. Um, do you have a favourite musical, Scotty? Lisa, I do. I think it's got to be Sound of Music. The stage version of Sound of Music that I saw recently was absolutely outstanding. So there you are. Uh, lovely, lovely. But I think it's got to be Sound of Music. Get the box out and give us a wee tune, Scotty, says Neely Davy Cooper McCallum. We will do. Time travellers, yes or no, says Steph. Yes, I'm time travelled, I told you. I've been on the earth for 325 million years. So there we are. Uh, you could take over. Nobody would stand a chance. Bring it on, says Steve Burrows. Or to take over, do a, do a show like Jeremy. 
uh, Edward Kiddens watching Kidner Cadden, Alistair Bigger and Mark, a shout out to Tom Weir, the greatest Scottish hill walker, the greatest Scottish hill walker. God bless Tom and a big kiss to Mark to uh, the late Tom. Fantastic, a wonderful man, actually omnipresent with us all the time. And his lovely sister, do you remember Molly, Molly Weir, Shoes for Sunday. She used to do some great stuff on the telly as well. Scotty, would you be happy to be interviewed on Southern Sound Hospital Radio? Of course, I like being interviewed, actually, because I've done so much interviewing in my life. I think it's time for somebody else to, uh, to take all the flat and interview me. So there you are. And, uh, and it's all good stuff. You never need to worry about interviewing Scotty McLean. I'm not going to say something. I'm not some sort of lout that I'm going to swear or anything. How's your dog, Scotty? Says Lisa Clark. Fantastic, Lisa. He is uh, 11 on Tuesday. So there you are. Uh, SNP, BNP, what's the difference to Stuart McTaggart? Aha! The difference is one is the absolute antithesis of the other. The British National Party is a right-wing party, and um, most people just want to avoid that, you know. It's, uh, uh, you know, they don't um, come across as particularly caring and what have you, and their stuff is fairly ancient. So there you are. Uh, and also, um, you know, they wave the Union flag, they misuse the Union flag, and what have you. Uh, SNP is a caring slightly left of center party right the genuine article which has made a wonderful wonderful job uh, and i'm not uh, a party political person at all i'm not even a political animal but has done a wonderful job of running scotland over the last 10 years and in fact is the only force in present day politics that talks sense look at the carnage that we've got in the left and the right in westminster absolute total car crash politics total carnage so there you are a, a disgraced behavior just beyond shocking so there you are god bless molly we are says mark and all right scotty uh poor from scotland tonight a eh, gutted oh stay stop panicking stay collington i'll tell you what a ka-ching there uh give him a happy birthday treat for me says lisa yes i will lisa He's the most gorgeous little guy um, he should come and see us, but you can never take a picture of that dog. He just wanders off. Um, thoughts on Bobby Sands, hero or villain, says Johnny M. Linney. I think it depends on where you're coming from, Johnny, what you see in these people and what they did and how their lives ended. So there you are. Uh, Tony Mack, I visited my school and my old bullying teachers. I think bullies are cowards and unhappy people. What do you think? Well, a bully is somebody who um, probably has been bullied themselves. And the way to deal with a bully is to not run from them, but to turn around and say, come on then, bully. Come on then. What's your problem? Uh, excellent stuff. So there we are. Uh, yes, Bobby Sands, uh, quite a long time gone now, of course. And um, I don't ever think that um, so-called terrorism has ever achieved anything. If you look at Mr. Gandhi, who was perhaps the greatest political leader of all time, you know, regardless of your background, your creed, your color, your beliefs, uh, Mahatma Gandhi was perhaps the greatest political leader of all time. He changed the world uh, when he didn't even really have a power base. Uh, Stuart McTaggart, education has plummeted in Scotland after 10 years of SNP. Actually, not at all, Stuart McTaggart. Uh, so there you are. Um, education, Scotland still leads the world on education, you know. So uh, your poorest education is actually down south in the home counties, believe it or not. So Scotland still leads the world in education. But I do think uh, you know, that they need to uh, revalue the whole thing about public service pay and what have you, uh, you know, and work out just uh, where they're going with that. But no, 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 the SNP has done a wonderful job in Scotland. Look at the mess, the absolutely car crash down south uh, in politics. Kieran Fox, Scotty, going to suggest a different topic to engage on, both churches. Uh, so there we are. Um, and uh, the Spanish Archbishop, I just missed that there. Uh, so there we are. 
uh, Stuart McTaggart. So there you go. No, Stuart, I'm not going to uh, go there with you. I'm sorry, but that's not particularly funny at all. Uh, I think the best way to go over bullying is to forgive them. I'm friends with a lot of people who used to bully me in school, says Lisa. Uh, well, I think you'll see on Scotty McClure's YouTube, Scotty McClure's YouTube channel, you'll see there's some uh, discussions, late night discussions on bullying. Um, and yes, it's a very strange thing, but it just needs to be uh, stamped out. It needs to be reported always and stamped out. John Rafferty's watching. Um, both quoting Romans, which must have been written by old men trying to keep hold of power. Like now, says Kieran Fox. Yes, it's very interesting. There is um, an absolute uh, early podcast on young people today saying how dreadful they are. And it was uh, written in 480 BC, I think it was. Um, so there you go. As I said, uh, what's your thoughts on fat women? They're still the same. Well, fat anybody, I think, needs a help. You know, I know I'm not at my slimmest at the moment, but um, I think that we should always look after the fat people, knock the door, ask them if they want to come out for a walk, give them a wee bit of exercise, and perhaps should save their life. Uh, Kieran Fox, Church of England and Catholic Church won't be drawn on the subject. What would they not be drawn on? Do you know the Doug's watching, by the way? Um, the Church of England and the Catholic Church are not terribly far apart when it comes to uh, High Anglican and, uh, and, and Holy Roman. Uh, they're both effectively um, high mass. So there you are. Uh, Scotty, uh, uh, thoughts on the plastics in the North Sea? God bless the fish. It worries me all the time if I have lemons, which I sometimes do uh, to help my skin. Um, Atik Rahman says, Islam for all, come to Islam. So there we are. Well, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, Stephen McKenzie is watching. Class, says Rab Hill. Um, I've got no share button tonight, Scotty, says Alfred James Wright. Well, just type, 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 de type, Alfred James Wright. I say, I'm watching Scotty McClure live on Facebook Live. Are you? And a big, big thank you to everybody. Oh, my goodness, we're past the share point. Share, 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 as quick as you possibly can. So there you are. Get sharing. Uh, is both churches not follow the same Bible, says Angie Thompson. Well, you've got the King James Version of the Bible from the um, 1680s. So you've got the King James Version. Uh, so that was more, then you've got the Westminster Confession of Faith. Yes, you've got the creeds, the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, all that sort of stuff. So no, they don't exactly. Uh, there are changes. And of course, in Catholicism, you're effectively following the old Shorter Catechism. The first question, the Shorter Catechism. What is uh, man's chief end? What is the chief end of man? The answer, of course, which you will all shout back at your devices, man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Uh, thank you for mentioning us on air, says Atik Rahman. Not at all, you're very welcome, Atik. Um, aha, there you are, Scotty. Dinky do, says Dino the Doug. Uh, VJ Dukaran, Moon. Uh, so, uh, it's time all religion was dropped, says Kieran Fox. Not at all, Kieran. I mean, you'll never be free of religion because it's a belief system that people have from a very young age and they like to live within that belief system. Uh, you're not taking calls anymore, Scotty. I was one of your callers. Very nice to talk to you, says Stevie McKenzie. Uh, we had to give up the calls because a schoolboy decided to say something not very pleasant and very, very immature. And, of course, it spoiled the whole program. We lost all the video because I would not have that going out on air. Uh, yes, Attic, it is, says Kieran Fox. No, Kieran, religion has never ever caused a problem in the world. Uh, what causes a problem is a lack of knowledge and understanding. So there you are. Uh, do you believe in magic, says Steve Collington? Well, I've had a pretty magic time, and I used to work for a radio station called Magic. That was a wonderful radio station. So uh, I suppose I do. The King James Bible was created because the RC Church didn't want common people reading the Bible and having a mind of their own. Well, Stuart McTaggart, I think what happened is William Caxton came up with his printing press. And of course, Gutenberg had come up with one in the 1500s in Germany. And therefore, what you had, the Reformation spreading throughout the Western world, right across Europe, the Reformation in Scotland with John Knox, 
you had Martin Luther, the Lutheran Church in Germany, you had John Calvin. So you had all that Calvinistic setup that was going on, the start of Presbyterianism. So a lot of your Catholic churches were taken over by Protestants, people who protested. And your main difference that you have between the Holy Roman Church, the Catholic Church, and the Protestants is uh, um, partaking of communion at the Lord's table. So there you are. The Protestant believes that um, the elements, the wine and the bread, um, are um, symbolic elements, whereas um, the Catholic believes that the elements become within you. They transubstantiate within you through transubstantiation and uh, they become the body and the blood of Christ. So there you are. And one thinks the other should not be sharing the Lord's table, but I think they should. Uh, have you ever seen a ghost, Scotty, or had any paranormal experience? Me and my mate were talking about this. Just wanted to know if you've ever experienced anything, Steve McKenzie. Yes, I have. Neely Davy Cooper McCallum, you're a very knowledgeable man, Scotty. I thank you, Neely Davy Cooper McCallum. Yes, I have experienced a ghost. I was sitting working one night, very, very cold feeling in the room, and I looked to the centre of the room, Mark Cruden, the body of Christ, the body of Christ to you. Um, Christ be with you, Christ be among you. Um, the uh, gutted we read got voted off strictly. I liked him, says Angie Thompson. So there you are, yes, but I mean, you can like somebody, but what do they like to dance with? Are you looking forward to a new series of Still Game this month, says Lisa Clark? Always enjoy Still Game. I should actually get a small part in Still Game. I hope if anybody's watching tonight that's got influence in uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation, uh, you know, to say, listen, get Scotty McClure a wee part in Still Game. How is the fox? Is Kieran Fox no relation? The fox is beautiful. I haven't seen him for a while, actually. Um, have you read the Quran, says Mustafa Tet? Um, I have read a lot of the Quran, Mustafa, yes, because it, it wouldn't be right not to be reading the Quran. Um, so there you are, so that you have as much knowledge as possible of your friends um, and your brothers and your sisters. Scotty, any chance you can put your bonnet on back to front, stick your tongue out and say ta-ta? I'll not say it just now because uh, ta-ta. There we are. Hello. <laughs> Hello. There you go. That's that sorted for you. A uh, ghost, Mrs. McClure, came into the living room uh, with a night cream on. Says Angie Thompson. I know, the night cream. The cucumbers in the eyes. I'll tell you. Does that make Catholics cannibals as Jews? Uh, Jew Jesus was a man and they eat his flesh and drink his blood. No, he gave up his flesh and his blood. Yes, so that all the sins of the world would be washed away. So there you are. The Lamb of God, the Paschal Lamb. So there you are. Kiri Eliezer. Um, so, very good book, says Mustafa Tit. Uh, you would be great in Snow Game, Scotty, says Tony Mac. I'll get myself into the clans on there. What about you there? How are you all getting on there? Okay, Bobby. See, they two get another wee, uh, you know. Shove out the door. Um, there's a part of the Quran. How do you spell it in Kelvin Grove? Uh, the Quran. Uh, the Quran. Uh, how do you spell it in the Kelvin Grove Museum? Says Andy Thompson. Yes, indeed. Uh, Scotty, get that hand backwards and join the Craig Lang Young team. The epic still game. Right. A bit of that. I come here to open your new community centre. No, you don't. <laughs> right. Uh, I can imagine you playing the part of Big Innes, Scotty, in the big end. Uh, why do we need confession if Jesus died for our sins? So there you are. Well, you confess your sins to cleanse yourself, to gain absolution of your sins, because everyone is born a sinner. This is what the Catholic believe. Yes, the Catholic believes everyone is born a sinner, right? Other people believe everyone 
is born innocent. So there you are. So original sin is what we're talking about. So you're always going to be confessing because you need to be cleansed of your sins um, so that you can uh, go to purgatory and then to heaven to sitteth at the right hand of God with the communion of saints and with the angels. So there we are. Uh, a shout out, says Alan Alsa Hills. Dinky do. So there we are. And uh, ha ha, classic, says Paul McCulley. Yes, indeed. Just going back to religion for a moment, Scotty. A religion divides people and people kill in its name. Yes, does the game of who has the best imagery, friend? So there we are. It's only symbolic of flesh and blood, I've heard, says VG. Well, that's what the Protestant believes. They don't believe in transubstantiation. I confess my sins to the cat, because he ain't telling no one, says Angie Thompson. Angie, do you speak cat? Do you know what he's telling them? So there we are. I might speak cat, and you might be amazed what I know. So there we are. Tug out and sit at all. Mustafa says, see you later. See you later, Mustafa. Dinky do. Stuart McTaggart, a wee newborn baby full of sin. Behave, says Stuart. So there we are. We are all jock. We're all jock Tamsin's bairns, Mark. You're quite right. Teresa Carmel Gresswell's watching. Uh, Stephen Wright's watching. And Mary T. Warner is watching. Dinky do. A very warm welcome to all of you. Um, and welcome to Scotty McClue's program. My goodness me, we're live on the big one. We're live on Facebook Live. The one everyone's watching, the one everyone is talking about. Tell, 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 ten to tell, ten to tell, ten to tell, ten about Scotty McClue. Just for you on Facebook Live. It's share time. I'm passing share time tonight. It's going so fast. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Type in, guys. Type, 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 type on your keyboards. Come on. Type, 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 type. And um, say to them, are you watching Scotty McClure live on Facebook Live? Scotty, I haven't seen a live Instagram post yet, <coughs> says Andrew Mackay. You need to try it out. I only went on Instagram last week. So Scotty McClue 1 is my Instagram, at Scotty McClue 1. Colin Rogers watching Dinky Doo. Kevin Whibley's watching. You should be on here, Kevin, saying your piece. Dinky do, Scotty, says Stephen Wright. Dinky do to you. Um, is right, Scotty fella, says Alan Elsa Hills. Should women still drive pink cars, Scotty, says Kieran Fox. I think they should, because then you know that it is a woman driver. Um, I mean, it's very interesting. I was just going into the shops yesterday, and a lady sitting having a job turning into the shops, turning right into the shops. So I slowed down and gave her the lights. Uh, she stalled the car, tried to start it, couldn't start it, sat there, and she was just waving on, on you go, on you go, uh, and all the rest of it. So I don't know if she just wasn't used to having uh, somebody show her some manners. I went to church to get baptized because uh, I never was, and they wanted to dunk me. In a pool of water, says Andrew. Yes, a full immersion, that's known as. The Baptists, of course, would go in for that. Scotty, we trust people with moustaches, especially women. I don't know. Would you trust somebody with a moustache? Would you trust somebody with a tattoo? That's what we were discussing on Facebook Live and Scotty McClure's Facebook page. Would you trust somebody with a tattoo? Gordon Robertson, read Jock Thompson. Various possibilities as to who uh, Jock... Tamson's something, something, something. Jock Tamson was a minister. A, I think it was a Church of Scotland minister. Jim Gallagher's watching. Oops, I'll start that again, says God Robertson. I think you should, God, and I'd be grateful if you would. Should women wearing uh, Habib's drive, says Kieran Fox. Um, yes, I don't see why not. I mean, they do. And, of course, uh, in the Middle East, um, there's uh, uh, just been a great revision of uh, of women drivers, so uh, fantastic, excellent stuff. So that's that's an interesting one. What's your thoughts on missiles between America and Korea? Something's going to go off, says so Steve Burrows. I doubt it. We were here over the Bay of Pigs, Cuba, Kennedy, Khrushchev, Nikita Khrushchev, and Nikita uh, said to uh, JFK. Young man, be very, very careful about mobilizing your military, because once you mobilize them, 
you can't stop them. See, the First World War, the uh, Kaiser tried to stop the mobilisation of, uh, of troops and couldn't, actually physically couldn't stop it because uh, they were on the move, they were on the go. Uh, so there we are. Uh, VJ Dukaram, yes, very quite right as well. Um, what is a habijib? Uh, so there you are. Spelling problems, probably VJ. Uh, so my thoughts on missiles, um, you know, they're just, I mean, if you take the whole nuclear button away from that pair, from Donald Trump and from uh, Kim, uh, you know, and uh, Donald and Kim, uh, they're just, it seems like a couple of schoolboys just shouting names at each other. Aye, very good. Aye, you think that. Come here and say that. Are you big enough? You know, it's all that sort of stuff, isn't it? Yes. JT was the minister of Duddingston Parish in Duddingston Village in Edinburgh. Gordon Robertson, I know Duddingston very well. In fact, I'm sure I've had a light refreshment in uh, the Sheep's Head. So there you are. I think Bonnie Prince Charlie was in Duddingston. Duddingston Loch, down the bottom of the city, down the bottom of the Royal Park. Uh, should Theresa May continue, says Kieran Fox. Well, that's not actually up to me. It's up to her if she wants to continue. I mean, uh, you know, it was quite uh, good comedy. I wonder if all that the other day, all, all that comedy was worked out because it was very, very good comedy from that point of view. So a lot of senior conservatives are great comedians. Um, and come out with a funny line, some less so perhaps, you know, less less, less funny. Um, so there you are. But that seems to be what's going on. But um, it's not up to us. The, the Tory party is in complete disarray. They're fighting each other all the time. And uh, the country is going doing the pan as they do that. I mean, since 1979, this country's been getting robbed blind. The whole infrastructure's changed. Margaret Thatcher took all the money to London, and um, that needs to all come back north. So there you are. Uh, the pair of them, like Father Dougal Maguire, Father Ted, don't press the red button. More you say, the more they want to. Uh, see if you say Mark very quickly. Would it sound like a dog with a lisp? Try it. Uh, Mark, 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 Mark. Yes, very good. Mark, 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 Mark. <laughs> Think of the blockade and North Korea will do enough. Even China have agreed to stop the supplies. It's very difficult to mobile your army if you have no raw oil. Except if you look at how efficient some armies have been through history. I mean, the Japanese army, the Western armies were wanting, you know, mince and tatties and steak and egg and chips and cooking and frying and brewing up and setting up latrines and digging this and digging that. The Japanese had a handful of rice and had bicycles and they uh, got themselves around like that. The Japanese army in the Second World War. Uh, think of the blockade. Yes, absolutely. Dean Park is watching. One of our finest stars of stage and screen. Dean Park, wonderful man. And uh, I believe he's in pantomime. So Dean Park, tell us what's going on. And I will tell the world. That's what it's about. They're a wonderful guy. One of Scotland's finest showbiz guys. Uh, which political party would you advise would unify the UK again? Kieran, if you want me to be absolutely honest, and I'm not making any political points here, but they could do an awful lot worse than ask Ms Sturgeon if she would mind moving into Downing Street to bring the kind of political calm and organisation and delivery that uh, we've been benefiting from in Scotland for the last 10 years. And I've never ever seen Westminster deliver in that way. So there you are. They're, they're fine at argy-bargy, but actually delivering. And uh, the thing is that the Scottish government have delivered. And that should all be reported in the national media. The national media need to get their act together because what's very, very interesting, at the moment, You've had all these negative headlines, either not mentioning the great work of the Scottish government, because it's not in the interests of, um, of uh, the, the southern media, uh, all the media's own down there. And they've spent so much slagging off Scottish independence, the Scots, Scotland, the Scottish government, 
or not mentioning them. And in actual fact, it's so interesting, it's had very little effect. And all it has done is meant that people are starting to mistrust the mainstream media and they're starting to mistrust the newspapers. So there you are. So all that's happened is that the trust has gone. And when the trust goes, the people, very difficult to get it back, very difficult to rebuild. So there we are. Quality Scotty is a skin fox. Misogyn is editing in the wings. Like a is, is waiting. I think that means waiting in the wings. Like a silent assassin. Yes, absolutely. You can say what you like. I mean, obviously, there's been a tremendous push from 2014 to weaken the case for Scottish independence. And it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Scotland will never be better together. I can tell you that. But as I say, I'm not uh, going into politics because I'm not a political animal. But that's what I would say would happen. The only other thing we could do uh, in 1688, when uh, you had William and Mary came across the glorious revolution, the Protestant king and queen who came over from Holland, yeah, and um, set up the, the, the Bill of Rights, which is the nearest thing we've had to a constitution since the Magna Carta uh, of, uh, was it 1284, the Magna Carta, 1234. I'll have to try and remember that. But anyway, you'll know. But the Magna Carta, there's only one Magna Carta, so we know what's going on there. The Great Charter. That's what it means. It's Latin for Great Charter. Magna Carta. And um, what you've got there, um, it's very, very interesting because since 1688, that was an end to what they called absolute monarchy, when the king of the queen's power was absolute and it was a start of constitutional monarchy when you had your constitution which they find very hard to have it written down the british constitution so i would say the bill of rights and the magna carta would be a pretty good guide there um so that's what you've got there um what do you think of nigel farage cracking on with brexit probably more than boris i think brexit will probably uh, fizzle out to be quite honest they're very very nervous about saying that because they don't want to go against democracy but what i was going to say let me finish the bit there about um, absolute monarchy we could go back to that and put uh, england and wales and northern ireland under direct rule from buckingham palace so there you are the snp have divided this country to stuart mcdagger they haven't divided it at all that's another myth that they've actually brought it together they brought the Scots together thinking about their future. Remember, independence is not party political at all. In fact, it's not even really political. It's economic. Scotland has been starved of cash. Scotland brings in huge amounts of revenue and £40 billion pounds plus goes to Westminster for squandering. Now, we need to be saying, no, 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 that should stay with Scotland and we will pass that on. So there you are. So that's what we're saying on that. Uh, so Brexit, you know, it looks like it's going heading towards the long grass. That's what it looks like to me. Um, now, uh, the SNP have divided the country, so they haven't. And people are not sick of independence at all. And also, Scotland did not vote to remain, uh, and Scotland did not vote to be better together. That's another myth. The mainstream media pump out, they say, oh, well, I was Scotland. Scotland voted against. Uh, Scotland didn't vote against. Just over half the people voted against. So there you are. Uh, what do you know about the Battle of Flodden Field, says Dave Muirhead? Battle of Flodden Field down in the borders, just uh, between uh, between Carlisle and uh, um, the Solway there, Flodden Field, 1513. And... Um, King James V died at the Battle of Flodden Field, I think. He was married in 1503 to Margaret Tudor, the marriage of the Thistle and the Rose, and in 1513 he fell at Flodden Field, uh, just down at Carlisle there by the Solway. So there you go. So that's what I can tell you about that. Um, and, uh, of course, James IV had fought against James III, his own father, uh, Battle of Sockyburn. Remember the Battle of Sockyburn? So there you are. 
Yep, it's a lot stronger. Indier F2 will happen, says Robert Riley Dowd, Senior 2. Yes, of course it will. It's axiomatic. Check that word up. Independence for Scotland is axiomatic. And all political parties should come round to backing it. Remember the British government were very, very, very anti-Brexit. I could give you a stream of quotes that they said would be better for jobs, better for the economy, better for government, better for everyone if we stayed in Europe. And then with the uh, stuff on the side of the red bus, the, um, the Brexit lot just won the day, which surprised everyone, of course, including the Brexit lot. They are now Brexiteers, as in T-E-A-R-S, and you've got the Brie Mainers. So there you are, Brie Mainers and Brexiteers crying buckets because they think they're going to turn the country into a mess and they need to save face. But I would say history is littered with people lacking, hoping to save face and lacking very much for their country. I agree about the fizzling out of Brexit, but the Brexit caused the Catalan Spexit or the Venetians saying they want to be separate again too, says Kieran Fox. Yes, but there's myths, for instance, calling Scots separatists because they want to um, look after their own administration is a nonsense. Ian Kerr's watching. Uh, just over half equals most of Scotland's to Stuart McTaggart. Yes, just over half, 50 uh, 5%, 54%, but remember, not everybody turned out, Stuart, uh, and not everybody knew what they were actually voting for. A lot of people didn't. They, they fell for um, for uh, uh, senior politicians coming up and telling a few whoppers. It was misconstruing the truth. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Can't stay on. Just want to say good morning. It's a very wise man. I hope you stay on longer next time. This is Eric Amaya over in Australia. We love you, Erica. Dinky doo from down under. So there you are. Excellent stuff. Hogmanay's on a Sunday night, Scotty. Will you be doing a special show with a few shandies? Paul McCulley, good idea. The Scotty McClue Hogmanay bash, famous the world over. Erica Meyer, man. So there you are. Excellent stuff. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I beg your pardon. What did I say? So there you are. I said, lady, I do beg your pardon, Erica. Please forgive me. Do you think Trump is a good leader? Says Tony Mac. Well, what constitutes a good leader, Tony Mac? A dictatorial stance? It's interesting. I see uh, Trump changing all the time. I see him metamorphosing uh, into being uh, POTUS. You know, I like to see that. So we'll see what happens. Stuart McTaggart. Bullocks, Scotty. If it had went SNP way, what you mean is gone SNP way? Scottish education, remember? Uh, would you say the same? Uh, what do you mean would I say the same? Yes, I would say that, um, you know, just over half of Scotland voted for it, but then they would be much the wiser now because at that point the knife had not been pulled. They promised everything, never kept the promises. You can actually hear it back saying that uh, now what we promised Scotland would not be delivering any of that. That was really just to get the, uh, the the nationalists to back down. It's a lot of nonsense. Uh, so see that uh, bird tutor you're on about. Uh, does our da make crisps? Very good, Rab. We attempt at humour there. Quite good. Gareth Hamilton's watching. Dinky do, Gareth. Lovely to hear from you. Now, guys, can you be sharing? Let's do a bit of housekeeping here. For a start, you need to hear the Shelley McRobbie interview, right? Um, fantastic stuff. Great interview this week, and uh, you, you, you need to get yourself onto that. Yes, Radio Telstar International with Shelley McRobbie interviewing me, Scotty McClue, and uh, get that heard for goodness sake. If you've got any influence of television and radio companies or platforms, do let us know. If you want to advertise, you want Scotty McClue to do your voiceover for television or radio, do let me know. If you've got a spare couple of quid, uh, so there you are. Scotty, I'm going to have to love you and leave you. I'm up at five for work. Keep up the good work, big and dinky do. Thanks for joining us and for staying with us. If you've got a spare couple of quid, stick them into Scotty McClue's uh, PayPal. Uh, or Scotty McClue's GoFundMe. You'll get them on the Scotty McClue website, scotty-mcclue.com. Uh, Gareth Hamilton says, Lol! Love it, says Peter Ewing. 
A pleasure as always talking to you, Scotty. Have a great night and a good week. God bless. Uh, please post the link, says Gareth Hamilton. Well, you'll see it on Scotty McClure's Facebook page, Gareth Hamilton. Get on there and look at Scotty McClure's Facebook page, and you'll get all the links there. Simon Tate, one of the country's top broadcasters, is watching right now. Dinky do, Simon Tate. Lovely to hear from you. And, of course, Red Rose Radio, 35 years old this week. Tremendous. What's your thoughts with the government not funding the air ambulance, Scotty? They should always be funding the air ambulance. They should be funding benefits for cancer sufferers. All these sort of things. I've seen some disgraceful things happen when there's plenty of money sloshing about Westminster. So there you are. Uh, my worry, if all this is going on, re-Brexit and Catalonia wanting independence, etc., etc., the Spanish Prime Minister saying no to Catalonian independence, isn't that much like, and I can't see what you're on about, Kieran. If it's what I think you're talking about, Kieran, remember you've lost your argument. Once you go there, that is an actual syndrome, what you're saying there, and uh, you lose the argument right away as soon as you mention that. So um, can I just advise you there on a point of order, Mr. Fox? Nice one, says Gareth Hamilton. I believe 55% of Scots said yes, and the rats rigged it, says Robert Riley Dowd, senior too. Well, you never know. I doubt it very much. I don't think you could actually rig an election in this country. I think they would never, ever hear the end of it. Uh, you know, they'd be, they'd be run ragged if that was the case. So I don't think so. But um, I think that um, there was a massive force of mainstream media against Scotland leaving because uh, they've got their interests. You see what I mean? They take money out of Scotland uh, and all that sort of stuff. So there we are, Kieran Fox, yes, uh, 1939. I see where you're coming from, Kieran, but as I say, once you start to go there, you start to weaken your argument. Couldn't get a word in, uh, so there you are. Heard that the woman couldn't get a word in, says Rab Hill. So there we are. I know a guy who hasn't spoken to his wife for years. It's not he doesn't love her, he just doesn't want to interrupt her. Um, it's the Tories, says Gary Hamilton. Gareth Hamilton. Furthermore, uh, as the UK held... Scottish and Welsh, says Kieran. Yes, uh, the UK held Scottish and Welsh. Yes, what do you mean by that, Kieran? You have to qualify that. I'm a little bit loose there. Who's the picture behind you? That's me. So there you go. And uh, that one, that's me. There you go. And that's me. There you are with Wreath the Labrador. Fantastic. There we go. Never a dull moment. So that's who's behind me, Stan, and uh, a very warm welcome to you. Now, share, guys, big sharing, share, 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 share. Tonight we're talking about marriage, and what we're saying is, does marriage work best when uh, both parties do their traditional roles? The man goes out and brings home the pennies, and the woman stays at home, sees to the children, and uh, dusts and polishes and cleans the house up. And does the food. Uh, so there we, there we are. So you're rich, Scotty, says Gareth Hamilton. I am the richest man in the world. All right? I just don't have any money. Um, shouldn't Catalonia have the same right? Uh, or are we in Hitler's 1939 in Spain? Poo-poo then. Uh, well, remember that Spain was a dictatorship till very, very recently. You had Franco... They're from the Second World War. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, did you take the 350,000 bid from the rival station? Do you know, Ste? I didn't. I kept my word, rightly or wrongly, and I stayed in Scotland. What about that? So there you are. That's the measure of me. Remember that we don't live forever, and you can't take the money with you. So the quality of life is very, very important. So I turned it down. It was actually very genuine at the time. Franco was 1940, that's right. But he stayed through uh, right until, when When did he go? Was it the 70s Franco went? I can't actually remember, but I do remember the night he went. I remember the day he went. And I remember the guy coming on television dressed in diplomatic um, clothes and uh, announcing uh, with a terrific tear in his eye that uh, Franco il morte. Um, he's dead. 
Marriage? What about the roles? If you've got two males or two females? Well, am I I don't know a lot about gay marriage in terms of the ins and outs of day-to-day -day living with each other, but am I not right in thinking that usually one of them takes on the role of husband and one of them takes on the role of wife? I don't know. I might be talking out of turn. If I, if I am, then I do sincerely apologise. But that's the impression I got from talking to, uh, to people who are gay and married. That uh, the sort of uh, still a touch of the Mr. and Mrs. Uh, so there you go. Scotty, are you for or against Scottish freedom? Gareth, I uh, believe very, very firmly that Scotland would do an awful lot better with its own cash. Whether they pay a bit to help out their neighbour down south, fine. But they'd be far better off running it. Scotland's never been so well run since we got that Scottish Parliament. They are, look at the mess that's going on down at Westminster at the moment. So you've kind of answered your own question there. But I'm not any political separatist or anything like that. I'm only advising you economically that Scotland would do very well on its own and should have been on its own for a long, long time now. Interesting discussion though, Scotty. Thank you. Uh, what's worrying me happening re-Brexit in Spain is interesting to watch now. Yes, I think don't get too linked up with all that. Uh, let's not lose sight of the fact that people of all parties and persuasions want independence for Scotland. I think that's the important thing. Ben Fasakhali is watching. I think you do. Jot McCuddy, McCuddy, Zor the Dyke. If you touch McCuddy, McCuddy will give you a bite. I finished it for you there. Uh, so there we are. Uh, I chopped the wife's toes off so she could get closer to the sink. Lol, says so Steve Burrows. Not funny, Steve. Bit old-fashioned. Uh, uh, obviously a joke, but unity, I feel, is better. Factionalism takes us back. Kieran, unity is not better economically, right? Because look at the way they're treating Scotland. Miss Sturgeon should be on a 50-50 equal basis with Theresa May. Yes, that was in the Act of Union, that anything that happens after the Union is on an equal footing. The two countries, Scotland and England, 50-50. So she didn't actually have a mandate to turn round and say to Nicholas Lund, now is not the time. She didn't have a mandate to do that. So there you are. Uh, and Miss Sturgeon should be at her side all the time during all this Brexit stuff. So there we are. So stop thinking that just because you've got 55 million and 5 million, um, that one's more important than the other, because they're not. So there you are. No marriage isn't about who should bring in the pennies. Both are equal. This is 2017, not 1917. None of this woman's place is in the kitchen crap. So Robert Riley Dowd Senior too. That's coming from a bloke. Interesting. Sturgeon's on the TV now. She doesn't look comfortable, maybe not, but that's because she's probably uh, doing so much big picture stuff. So they are wonderful, wonderful stuff. Oh, Scotty, say hello to my wife, Geddy, please, says Rappel. Hello, Geddy, dinky-do. Lovely to have you with us. The McCuddy poem, not heard that in years. My nana used to recite that to me when I was a bear, and says Gordon Robertson. Well, there you are. I was just finishing it for Mark. Hey, Jock McCuddy, McCuddy is over the dike. If you touch McCuddy, McCuddy will give you a bite. They were, and that's how James Herriot got interested in animals. Um, when he became a vet, he was in Edinburgh. He was brought up in Edinburgh. And the Coleman's horse came round. And uh, what happened? He went up and started to um, pat the horse when it was playing. And the horse dropped its nose bag and got a hold of him by the breeks and shook him and chucked him up in the air. And... Uh, the Coleman had to come and rescue the little James Herriot from his horse, and he said, Son, never meddle with stuff you dinna ken on in the boot. So that was it. And that was James uh, Herriot's lesson. He thought, Well, when I grow up, I will ken all about horses. So there we are. And he'd be a great horse vet. Uh, another great show, Scotty, as usual. An hour isn't long enough. Wadge says, Dinky Doo. Gareth Hamilton says, Lol. We're going to have to go soon. Are you want to get tune in the box, guys? I disappear like that. Don't worry, I haven't gone anywhere. Just going down. Do you want me tune in the box? 
So there we are. I'll see if I can get the box for you. Give you a wee tune. How's about that? <laughs> Excellent stuff. Right, here we go. There's the phone going. It's a busy place, this. Right. <laughs> that now what i'll do is i shall uh sing you there we go just put that off what i'll do is i shall sing you the song and the song goes like this goodbye everybody. goodbye take care everybody as you go goodbye everybody a wee or a and a cheery o cheerio folks thanks for joining us have a gorgeous week this is scotty mcclue saying to every single one of you dinky doo scotty mcclue has left the building <laughs>